Good morning, and I hope you're having a beautiful day. Today, we are going to look at the Namibian Wildlife Resorts camps across Namibia. And I'm going to show you where they're all located and what accommodation each one offers you. Do you remember when we first met? Let's get started in the south of the country, right across the border from South Africa, is I Ice Hot Springs Resorts and Spa. Now, I Ice means place of burning water because the whole resort is built on top of a hot springs at the southern end of the Fish River Canyon, which is Africa's largest canyon and the world's second largest canyon. Accommodation choices here are family chalets, rooms and camping. Head up the canyon to the north and you will come to Hobas Camp. Hobas Camp is where you start the hike if you're going to hike the Fish River Canyon. Hobas Camp has bushrooms and camping. Now to the coast where at Luderitz you will find Shark Island. It's on a rocky outcrop that sticks out of the sea. It can be quite windy there but there is camping places there and you can stay in the old lighthouse. Back inland and on the desert's edge is a very unique place to stay in Namibia, Dweseb Castle. Built by a German in old German style and decorated out with things from Germany at, from the late 1800s, early 1900s, there is a castle on the edge of the desert. And you can actually stay in the rooms in the castle and also in the grounds there is camping available. Now to one of Namibia's highlights, the Namib Desert, where you can camp at Sesram camping site and experience fantastic night skies and easy access into Sossus Flay. Or you can stay in the luxury eco Sossus Dune Lodge with breathtaking views stretching out into the desert. Also in the general area is the Naukluft camp, just over here tucked in the Naukluft Mountains, home to the mountain zebra, Naukluft offers homely chalets and camping. Now just on a side note, when you're in Naukluft that doesn't give you access to Sesrim, Sossusvlei and the desert. It's a separate game park, separate national park. Cross to Namibia's largest dam near Mariantel is Hardap Dam Resort, popular with anglers and on the main north road, B1, north, south, B1 road that goes through the center of Namibia, Hardap Dam has bush chalets, family chalets, VIP chalets, dormitory, and camping. Heading up the main B1 and close to Vintuk in the center of Namibia, you will find Danville Yun. Some accommodation in a game park there. It's a popular escape from the city's noise, and Danville Yun offers chalets and camping. Head north from Vintuk up the main B1 road, and you will come to Gross Barman Resort. Built around a beautiful lake, Gross Barman is a very popular conference venue. They offer rooms and camping facilities. Waterberg Resort sits in the shadow of the Waterberg Plateau Park. On top of the plateau there is a game reserve where you can go for game drives. Waterberg Resort offers chalets, rooms, family chalets and camping. Next we are heading into Damara Land to Korakas Rest Camp. Surrounded by dramatic landscapes and just south of Atosha National Park, Korakas Camp 
has bush chalets, family chalets and camping. A quick side trip back to the coast brings us just north of Swakopmund to a place called Windpomp, formerly known as Mile 14. Windpomp has uh, campsites spread out on the beach. A long, hot drive up the Skeleton Coast brings us to Torra Bay, which is only open in December and January and has camping sites. Going even further north up the Skeleton Coast, you finally get to Terrace Bay, an angler's paradise and possibly one of the remote, most remote places to stay in Namibia. There are rooms and chalets to stay in Terrace Bay. Our next six places to stay are all inside the Atosha National Park, the most amazing wildlife experience you can imagine and a photographer's dream. We're going to start over in the west at Dolomite Camp. Built among dolomite boulders on a rocky outcrop, Dolomite, Dolomite, dolomite Camp is a luxury permanent tented camp offering a peaceful luxury experience that delivers a great safari experience. Accommodation at Dolomite Camp is in luxury tented chalets. Also in the west side of Itosha is Oliphant's Rust Camping, very unique in that it has its own viewing platform overlooking a waterhole, so it's great for game viewing, but there is, it is exclusively a camping site. Now, to the most well-known place to stay in Itosha National Park, Okakweo Resort. With its night-lit waterhole that's viewable from inside the camp, it offers unrivaled viewing of the animals very easily. It is the biggest and busiest camp in Itosha National Park and there is a selection of accommodation. There is rooms, bush chalets, waterhole chalets, premier water chalet, premier waterhole chalets and camping. Moving east we then come to Halali Rest Camp. Often overlooked it is a quiet camp, it's the quietest of the three main camps in that stretch and is in an excellent game viewing area. There also is a night lit waterhole there, which is uh, popular for rhinos, so it's a good place to see rhinos if you want somewhere quiet but good game viewing. Halali is a good choice. Halali Resort offers rooms, chalets, family chalets, and camping sites. On to Namatoni Resort, an old fort built by the Germans, giving Namatoni a very unique and special feel. You can climb the lookout tower to watch the sunset and hear the sounds of the wild carried on the wind. Namatoni has rooms, bush chalets and camping. Our final place to stay in Atosha is on Koshi Luxury Eco Lodge. Built on the edge of Fisher's Pan, it's designed to have minimal impact on the environment with each chalet on stilts. It's a semi-removable camp. Accommodation here is in luxury tented chalets built on stilts overlooking the park. Finally, the last camp up here in the northeast of Namibia is Popper Falls Resort. An area of Namibia that is wildly different from the rest of the country. Most of the country is dry and arid for most of the year. This part of the country, there is big trees, rivers. It is a very contrasting and beautiful area. It's a great relief from all the heat and dryness of the rest of the country. Popper Falls has river chalets, chalets, family chalets and camping. And that's it, that's a summary of all the Namibia wildlife resorts, accommodation facilities across Namibia. I hope you found this useful and if you've got any questions about any of the places please comment below and let me know. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also I've put the prices on for this year and next year, um, they should be the same price but um, I'll put a link in the description below for a website that will give you up-to-date prices, uh, that will have up-to-date prices on it for the future. And if you're thinking of going to Namibia, let me know where you're going to go, and I will do videos in more detail of all these camps in the future. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on safari.